Well, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to speak in opposition of House Bill 4323. Uh, I know that doesn't surprise a lot of you, uh, but that is the case. Uh, I have observed about nine budget processes at this point in my life. Uh, it's no secret I sat on the floor before I got here and now I participated in about three budget processes and let me tell you what an interesting experience to say the least. I'm a Democrat, Mr. Speaker. Born a Democrat, I'll die a Democrat unless something tragic happens to me. <laughs> However, in all seriousness, I know that I disagree with a lot of my colleagues in this room about a lot of things. But at the end of the day, we often find common ground. And I've appreciated that. Regardless of party, many of us are on the same page about the basics of what we want for our state. We want good schools, we want better roads, we want our police officers and firefighters well funded and well taken care of. We want support for our veterans, we want to provide a high quality of life for senior citizens in our community. We want to leave a better Michigan for future generations. I know we want all these things because I've talked with you colleagues on the other side of the aisle, my colleagues on this side of the aisle, about them. So why on earth would you vote to support a bill that not, that not only denies these things to the people of Michigan, but actively strips our government of the ability to provide them? When we are shown evidence that this method, the wholesale gutting of vital programs, somehow works better for the people of Michigan, then I'll get on board. I can promise you that. But the statistics are not on your side. The math is not on your side. And with this budget as it now stands, we're leaving $283 million in general fund on the balance sheet, $283 million, excuse me. This budget cuts $274.9 million in general fund from the executive recommendation. $118 million in general funds we cut from Health and Human Services. I'm appreciative of the amendment that my colleague from the 57th District offered earlier in regards to senior services. I really appreciate that. Unfortunately, that was shot down. That means that this budget is taking services from our seniors, our children, and our families in the state of Michigan who need them the most. $15 million in a general fund cut from the Michigan Infrastructure Fund, which hurts communities with crumbling infrastructure in Michigan. We've heard some stories about that recently. $5.2 million in a cut from environmental protection, which states that clean air, clean water, and an environment for our children to be safe in and grow up in is not at, our prior, or is not at the top of our priority list. $24.8 million is diverted from the Unemployment Insurance Contingent Fund something that we owe folks who were falsely accused, falsely accused. We're taking that money and we're putting it in other places in which they deserve. That's not right. So after years of massive underfunding by about $8 billion cumulatively over the past 15 years, the budget only musters 12.4 million dollars in additional revenue sharing. And we have the opportunity in which we could have had an increase in revenue sharing. But yet, again, this means that our cities will have difficulties funding public safety, things like police, fire, and vital services to our citizens. And with a budget like this, the people are not gonna stand by your side either. Diverting funds or slashing them all together to make room in this budget to pass tax reform for billionaires or to needless or needlessly, excuse me, restructure MIPSers just to claim a political victory, that is not good governance. Representative, it is out of order to impugn motivations for the passage of a bill. So let's keep the specifics to what is the question before the House. The chair recognizes Representative Durhall. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I simply want to say, Mr. Speaker, that we are elected to serve the people. I know you know that, Mr. Speaker. 
We're elected to serve the people, not ourselves, not special interests, the people. So let's come together for once. I'm asking my colleagues on the other side of the aisle. Let's come together for once, for real. I've seen meaningful legislation pass through this chamber with bipartisan support. And there are times where we produce good legislation as an entire body. This is not one of those times if this budget passes. So let's come together for the people, let's serve them. Because honestly, they deserve better. I've seen it before, I've seen it happen from this very chamber. They deserve better, and I know that we are capable of it, Mr. Speaker. And so that's why today I cannot support House Bill 4323, and I urge my colleagues in this chamber to do the same. Thank you.